and inviting other singers as well to perform, and we put on an evening of entertainment. Uh, I wound up to date doing four of these shows, three of which were in a nightclub and two of which I sold out, which was very exciting. And I love the idea that I didn't need to ask permission to perform by auditioning. I got to create my own thing and take charge, which was really, really exciting to me. It was around this time that my friend Jean had a fantastic idea, and she said, why don't you put a link in your email signature that takes people to a YouTube video of you singing? Which was wonderful. So slowly, people started to identify me as not only a professional coach and speaker and facilitator, but also as a singer. So I was slowly coming out of the closet. <laughs> Around that time, too, I started facilitating workshops for a CEO association. And the first meeting that I had, the chairperson of the meeting, before um, talking to me, had noticed my email signature and clicked on it and saw some of my videos. And he was really impressed with my singing. We spoke about it. And I drove out to San Diego to meet with his group. And when he introduced me, he told everyone that I was a singer. And then jokingly I said, well, if you're really nice to me, maybe I'll sing a little bit later. So I went on and I facilitated the workshop, and it was not an easy group. I had a room full of CEOs. I was doing okay until about the last five minutes, one of the CEOs made a comment that really was sarcastic and just sort of sucked the life out of the session. Big surprise, right? I <laughs> see your expressions. <laughs> And I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible, and I did not want to give the benefit, them the benefit of seeing me cry. So I was packing my things, trying to get out of there while they were eating lunch, and I went up to say goodbye, and one of the CEOs asked me, he said, well, didn't you say you were gonna sing a song for us? So my instinct was I wanted to get out of there, but then there was another part of me that just clicked in and said, you know what? You want me to sing? Okay, I'll sing a song, I'll sing a verse of a song for you. I've got a roof over my head. I've got a warm place to sleep. Some nights I Instead of counting sheep, I've got a heart that can hold love. I've got a mind that can think. There may be times when I lose the light and let my spirit sink, but I can't stay depressed. When I remember how I'm blessed, grateful, grateful, truly grateful I am. Grateful, grateful, truly blessed and duly grateful. So I sang this song from my heart, and it was my way of saying to them, read between the lines. <laughs> this is who I am. I am a heartfelt person. You can take it or leave it. I don't care. And I left with my head held up high. And because I was a new speaker, they actually sent me an MP3 of feedback on my session. And almost half of the group encouraged me to somehow incorporate my singing into the program. I couldn't believe it. This group of intimidating CEOs were actually encouraging me to integrate my talents. And I never thought, I thought maybe somehow I could do that, but I never thought it was possible. But when I got that feedback, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it. And it's been now um, a few years where I have started integrating singing into some of my speaking engagements, into some of my workshops. 
And sometimes it feels like, don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Like candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. And other times, I look at some blank stares or some very nervous faces, and inside it feels so lonely, so lonely, so lonely. You see, when I'm singing in this kind of a setting, I'm modeling vulnerability. And I've come to learn that when I'm authentic, when I'm grounded in who I am, that it actually draws people in. And that when I put up a mask of perfection, as I was used to doing, I build a wall then within myself, and I also build a wall with all of you, because you're not really seeing who I am. So by me singing in that way, it gives people permission to realize you can show the good, the bad, and the not so pretty. And we can't really experience the joys of life, including love, unless we're willing to be vulnerable and take the risk of being hurt. So this year was a big year for me. I embarked on a three-part project. Part number one, I published my book, which is called Stepping Into More, Lessons from a Recovering Perfectionist. And the book is an autobiographical self-help book. So it details my journey, sharing much more of my story than I shared with you. And then there are questions at the end of each chapter for you as the reader to reflect on, to consider what insights and lessons can you glean from my experience. Step two of my project is I've just started producing a CD of songs that will accompany the book. So these, many of the songs are songs that I reference in the book. And part three of the project is I've started to produce or create a keynote similar today to today where I'm singing as I'm sharing my story. And ultimately this is going to lead into a one-person show. So it's been quite a journey. And my perfectionist, much to her dismay, has no idea where this is all going to lead. <laughs> What I do know, though, is that I feel more on purpose and more alive than I ever have felt before. And I know that when I trust what I call my gentle strength, that everything is going to be okay, and I have this feeling that something has changed within me. Something is not the same. I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game. Too late for second guessing. Too late to go back to sleep. It's time to trust my instincts. Close my eyes and leave. It's time.